Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's Loving the Strange with Carrie Jones and Sean Farrar. Loving the Strange, a podcast for weirdos and those who want to be weirder. Embrace the strange. New episodes every Saturday, live streaming Fridays. Loving the strange. Check us out. Hey, welcome to Loving the Strange. Where every week, couple weeks or so, you get to see where Carrie called me an idiot in the intro. I guess he's right. You're hurting my heart. Why? That just makes me so mean. Oh no, you're just trying. You're just making an excuse for me ahead of time. I'm just saying that you're still in the process, as we all are, of learning and evolving, and that you're gonna make mistakes just like I am, and that everyone needs to. Cultivate their forgiveness rather than their outrage. How's that? How's that sound? Sounds good, baby. Yeah. All right. Good. All right. So, welcome to the podcast. There's nobody here. I know. It's us. This is us. You oh, need D's here. To D's here. Woo-hoo! And D. Yay, D. D. Um. But anyways, hey, whoa. You got rid of me. How did that happen? I don't know. Oh no. I'm sure you know how it happened. It's all right. I actually you don't. You can be the big picture. I'll be the little picture. Well, right now, there's no picture of either of us. This is how it is in our hallway. <sighs> Sean Kelly. Big giant picture of Carrie with a wall. You are right all right. Back. We're oh. both back. We're both back. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. <laughs> Carrie forgot she's the only microphone in the room. <sighs> so and she sad. can't go away. Now you're stuck with both of us. We've had a day. We've had a day. <sighs> Yay. All right. So this podcast is about movie things and strange movies. Strange things. movies. And it might be about the movie being strange, the plot of the movie being strange, strange facts about the movie, or even a strange experience you had when you went to a movie. Oh, I got one of those. (laughs) Oh, no. Dee has also had a really strange day in a very, very, very long week. Yeah. I feel like our goal of the podcast, Dee, is to find you a better life. Like, <laughs> once we have managed to make these life better, we will uh, never have to podcast again. I don't, like, know. We don't know. I don't know how to do that. Oh, I think we could. Well, I think if D was willing to move to Maine, <laughs> we could find her a much better job. She's as a teacher? Yeah, lickety split. She would have probably in a better environment. Um, Everybody would love her. Yeah. And I think they would treat her really well. And it hardly snows up here anymore. No, it's like we, D, the hardiness, like the plant, like there's a map put out by the US FDA or something. Like, I don't know what it is, but someone federal. And they make all the hardiness zones for planting. For your garden. Yeah. And we just changed our hardiness zone. We to warm it. We're almost subtropical now. Mm-hmm. Not quite. But we don't have any really good all you can eat buffets. Like, what's the one, Golden Corral? Yeah. That you that's all are used problem. to. That's the problem. You'd be leaving behind a lot of good food choices. I know. That is the problem. Oh. He said, I mean, I'm not saying no. <laughs> I guarantee you'd enjoy the schoolwork more. I can set you up with an I interview think. with the school superintendent. Just ask. Dude. We can totally <laughs> do that for you. Um, but yeah, so this episode of the podcast is about 
not just E being awesome because she is here. and here and actually engaging. Wow, D. Um, but yeah. also about strange movies and strange movie experiences and strange movie facts and strange movie life. Shani and I actually went out to see a movie yesterday. Oh, that was fun. Sean did not enjoy it. It was rough on me. It was rough I'm on just me. Saying. There is a certain enjoyable aspect for us long-legged tall fellas to sitting on your couch and having your feet up on the coffee table while you watch the same exact movie as there is to feeling like you're sitting in an airplane eating some stale-ass popcorn. So we went and watching the movie. We went to support our local theater. It's a very small theater. It's really cool. It's like this art deco nonprofit theater that has like movies and like um, bands and stuff. And they give like free music classes and free improv classes. And they're like, it's filled with adorable humans who work there. And it's hard not. It is. I wasn't trying to bad enough. No, they're awesome. But it turns out that Sean and I are way too fidgety. And way too high context <laughs> to go and watch a movie with other human beings. And there weren't a ton of other human beings there, which might have been part of the problem. There was like 20 people there in a big theater. And we didn't even get to throw our toast. We didn't get to throw. Like Rocky Horror. Yeah, there was nothing going on. Like, and my problem is Chris is here. Hey, Christine. Bye. What the hell was that? that was me saying hi to Christine. So the <laughs> what Christine might remember me from as a child is that I'm pretty high context in the movies. I'm used to going to the movies with a with a crew, right? And like we participate fully in the movie. So like we're gasping, we're laughing ahead of the laugh track. Like this is what I grew up with, right? You so, know what the difference is, baby? What? Now you're going with the crew, but they're middle-aged, they're almost middle-aged people. <laughs> I'm middle-aged too, but like, I still am like that. Oh. Like, I am like immersive, right? And thank you, Christine said we rocked, and we did. And like, so we'd be gasping and screaming and cheering, like, and, and so we went to go see Ghostbusters, the newest Ghostbusters, last night, and... Nobody was doing that, man. It was very quiet. And I, oh. if I'm going to go out in public and be a part of a community watching a movie, I want everybody to be high context like me. I want them to be screaming and cheering and like, <gasps> and like, oh, no, you did it. And I want all of that to be happening like my youth. That entire movie crowd was like the part in Old Yeller where Old Yeller <laughs> dies the whole movie. Except no tears, but it's just that quiet. I've never seen Old Yeller. What? You've never seen Old Well, you can't watch it with me. That was like the first movie that made me cry when I was like You five. cried? Yeah. You cried real old tears? Yeller dies. No spoilers here. That's but totally old, a spoiler. Old Yeller dies. Oh, my God. And I was really attached to Old Yeller. Look, Christine says don't. 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 I'm not going. Uh, and, and Karen cries over good animal stuff. So, so uh, you're right, Christine. If she wants old yellow, it would be a, it would be a brawl fest, is what I was going to say. A what? A ball fest. B A W L. Okay. Uh, so your sis is here, and she says to never watch it either because it's horrible. <laughs> I'm telling you. I have never watched Old Yeller. I am never going to watch Old Yeller. I cry, as Sean was trying to explain, at dog videos where everything turns out okay. Like, if you show me an Instagram reel and there's a dog cuddling with a human, I will cry. If you show me a dog Instagram reel where there's a potential where the doggy may not make it, there's no, there's no going back for me. As it soon ruins as that my day. Animal stubs its toe, Carrie starts crying. I am very bad. Very, very bad. And one of my worst moments in my life. Um, all right, I have two embarrassing moments about being melodramatic in my life. And one was 
in fourth grade, we read this book called Where the Red Fern Grows. And, just talking about that. and oh, really? Yeah, jump, you're gonna have to skip a couple, but we can go back. Okay, and in that book, something bad happens to a doggy, and I sobbed the entire day at school. It was fourth grade. It was embarrassing. <laughs> and I became the girl who sobs. Before that, I was the girl who was always in a cast. But well, then so, I became the girl who sobs. And so then... What happened? Wait, 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 what happened to the dog in the red turn grass? I'm not going to talk about it. Was it this, this is deceased? It's yeah? Really, yeah? So just like old yellow. It's really sad. I mean, you know, who doesn't get attached to this awesome yellow lab? It was a coon hound, I think, in well, where the red fern grows, anyways. and it was saving its people. Oh, I can't even think about it. But anyways, like... Did you have a second story? Yes. In freshman year of West High School in Manchester, New Hampshire, which Christine can relate to, I had a teacher named Mr. Duffy, and we had to watch this really old movie for some reason about Nicholas and Alexandra, who are a czar and a czarina of Russia. And they get assassinated and they all die and are thrown into a pit. And everybody else was laughing during the movie because I guess the movie was bad. But I was in the back row sobbing, like legit sobbing for this czar and czarina. And Mr. Duffy pointed at me and made this huge, huge thing about the fact that I was crying. And he was like, only one person in this whole class has empathy. He was a baseball umpire. So you have to imagine him calling you out for having empathy in front of all your other 14-year-olds. It was horrifying. I became very embarrassed about crying too. It didn't it? fix your crying, though. No, it didn't fix. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell that teacher he failed. He totally failed. He also said things like, you're nothing like your brother. Oh, you I thought, him in the face for that. I, I thought it was an insult at the time, but now I think it was <laughs> a compliment. Um, D says, first one. Ready? You want to read, read it? Yeah, because I've been talking. Went to see cats with my friend, and there was a little girl that kept singing, Is this my song? Is this my song? When it finally came on, she screamed, My song! I'm not little girl, <laughs> yeah. Except Karen be singing it. Then I would have sung it. If you were like watching a Broadway show with Carrie in the audience and her song, her song came on, you wouldn't hear the I stage. try really hard not to. You wouldn't hear the stage version. I try not to. Um, Susie says, Rocky Horror Picture Show is the best movie for participation. Some will be shocked to hear me say that. Not us. I can't believe you went to Rocky Horror Picture Show. It's just a jump to the left. <laughs> and a jump to the left. Well, wait a minute now. I got, I got, I got a. Um, yeah. How long has the Rocky Horror Picture Show been around? A long time. Like, what's a long time? I know it's a long time. But well, Susan Sarandon was in it. Would it be impossible for you to tell us when you saw it? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's like the seventies or eighties. Like, I was just thinking, the further back you go, the more raucous it must have been. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Crazy. I remember when I was a teenager, again, in Manchester, New Hampshire, they were playing the Rocky Horror Picture Show with participation at the Palace Theater, which uh, Sarah Silverman's mom was instrumental in bringing back to life. Um, and I was not allowed within like five blocks of that show when it was happening. Really? My overprotective mom, yeah. <laughs> and I ushered, like I ushered as a volunteer, like for like oh high school credit to try well, to not get that show, huh? No. Mm -mm. Oh man. Yeah. <sighs> Poor kid. Christine says definitely don't watch a dog's purpose. I shall not now that I know. <laughs> yeah. D says. D says. Side note: I've never seen Old Yeller either. But I did see where the red fern grows. Did they make that a movie? I could not watch that oh, movie. Oh, that's a movie. I've heard of it. I never watched it. I only read I the book. I don't remember reading the book either. I might have skipped that one. That was a wise choice. <laughs> and Dee says it was two coon hounds. Love that book. You may love that book, Dee. See, that's why I didn't have to read it. That I went to school me. down south. <laughs> Dee is from the south. I know. I got a Florida. They don't want to. 
It's like sacrilege to the dog, you know. You know my kids read about that. Kind of right. stuff. Anyway. You want to read John's? Yeah, he said, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry I'm late. Just put the kid. I already read this one, and I'm kind of jealous. What? Just put the kids on a plane to Portugal, then France and Spain. So what if I got to work 70 hours a week for the rest of the year? John Bell. You do that anyways. You're just a good father. Can you be my father, John Bell? Yeah, no shit. <gasps> no joke. Put us on the plane. My Portuguese. We only need to go down to Florida, honestly. <laughs> We just need to get out of the state. Kimberly says, of mice and men got me. Poor Mickey. That's true, too. What, that. what was that about? <sighs> it's a really short, that... really short summation. It's about people. Yeah. Like all Steinbeck novels. I wish Steve Waddell was here because he could do the AP English. Like, Well, what was the book that was like a, about a mouse? No. <laughs> no, I mean, it was a... <laughs> Stuart Little? No, 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 no. It was, it might be this book. That's why I was asking. It was about the relationship between a man and a mouse, I think. All right, so this one is about two guys, and they're yeah. migrant workers, right? Oh, okay, yeah, no, that's not the book. <laughs> and one's named Lenny, and one's named George, and yeah. it's the Great Depression, and they move around, and it's really sad. Yeah. And I went to go see it on Broadway. Um, in college, I had a really wealthy boyfriend with really, well, his parents were really wealthy. So we always got to go to Broadway stuff whenever I went home on vacation. Yeah. And I always went on home vacation with him yeah. instead of going back to New Hampshire because oh, you're sacrilegious. That's why. I was a horrible human being. Um, <laughs> and I wanted free clothes and good food and to get oh to go to Broadway. God. So I. What? Yeah. Well, what? Say that again. Nothing. And so, <laughs> a gold digger. I wasn't a gold digger. It was just way more fun than going back home to New Hampshire. And so we went and saw *Of Mice and Men* on Broadway. And there was a there was like a scene near the end where the lady like breastfeeds um one of the workers because they're starving, and it was so scandalous. Was, I was like, is this porn? I don't know. <laughs> like, I was so New Hampshire. I like had no idea. I'm like, this seems very naughty. Um, And then we went to and they were making fun of me that entire time because I was like, that seems kind of naughty. Like, I get it. Like, it's like, I, I can see that of you. It's poignant, but like, is that like naked past the censors? Is that okay? And then we went to go see another show and it was off off broadway and they were still making fun of me because they love to make fun of me because why not um i was very new hampshire and very stupid at the time and they um i'm still kind of stupid but we went to go see another we were going to go see another off broadway show and it had like three big x's in their name in its name and I'm like, are you sure this isn't naughty? Like, you don't feel like this is a little porny, maybe? It has giant X's in the name. And they're like, Carrie, don't be ridiculous. Don't be ridiculous. Don't be ridiculous. And then we went with his mom to go see this. And it was like theater in the round. And it was like a black box. So, like, you're right there. Like, you're like here. And here are the actors. It's like so close. Yeah. It was porny. It was very <laughs> porny. It well, was like. At least you, hey, but you you claim to be so innocent, but you knew what the triple X was. Well, ah, oh, yeah. The truth comes out, folks. You, you know that song, uh, a "Lady in the Street and the Freak in the Sheets." Uh, Carrie embodies that. No, I don't. Everyone knows <laughs> I don't. You go live on your daydream, bitch. You live your daydream. Um, I can dream a little. Uh, so D says, the second went to see the visit. I've never seen that with my siblings. And at one point, spoiler, the two kids find this guy hanging from the tree in the yard. And this random guy said, Sean's favorite swear. <laughs> the entire theater laughed. Uh, I can see that. I did start to sing it loudly and off key. Um, That's Rocky Horror. 50 oh, years. 50 years? So that'd be 74 ish. Wow. Right? That's old. You know that, right? That's almost as old as Sean. Will you please answer me? What? Is that 74 ish? 
Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah Matt. I, I still want to know when Susie went and saw it, though. I know. Susie left. No, she didn't. She's ignoring my question. Oh, Christine, the first place you saw it was the Palace Theater. Better appearance than mine. Saw the Rocky Horror Picture Show? I bet. Oh. Dee said, I read the book and then had to watch the movie. Oh, and I love the movie, but I hate the doggy <laughs> death. There should be no doggy death ever. You know, we'll watch movies where humans get slaughtered constantly and not even blinking. Like, yeah, normally, whatever. Normally, sometimes you might get caught off guard. But, but animals? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Christine is right. George had a small mouse in his pocket in a place in the. Well, maybe that's the book I'm thinking of. You might I don't be. Know. Yeah. That was when I, back in my, I wasn't paying much attention to the school books page. Oh. Um, and Christine asked if I went to the New York to New York City with Modern Foreign Language Club at West High School. I don't think I did. I wish I did though. I feel like I missed out now. Were you in the Modern and Foreign Language Club? I was. Oh. I was. I was also in Latin Club. Well, you probably had to kick in some money, so you probably wouldn't let you go. Would you like to know how nerdy I was in high school? Mm. Oh, you're going to ruin all my dreams. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I was in Modern Foreign Language Club. Because I think intellectual women are sexy. Go for it. Man. I was in Modern Foreign Language Club. Uh-huh. Latin Club. Uh-huh. Uh, New Hampshire History Club. Now you're getting my attention. Yeah, New Hampshire History Club. You can't get any better than this. I'm trying to think of the nerdiest. I was, in, I was the president of the Students for Social Justice. Oh. Well, that does attract me a little more nowadays than it was in the past. <laughs> uh, no. All right. We have a big, big note from Susie. I'll read, read it. it. One of the places I lived without dogs in the theater as long as they didn't fight. The theater was a quarter of a small concert hut. It was summer. So the windows were open. Just as the scariest part of the Hounds of Baskerville, my classmate's <laughs> big black German Shepherd jumped through the window and sat next to me. Oh. I was eight at the time. I thought I was going to die. I bet you did. <laughs> that would be like, it's like a real life jump scare, really. I can't even imagine. Oh. Can't even imagine how terrifying that would be. Christine says you saw a cat. At the, uh, in New York. The, oh, in New York? <clears throat> With Modern Foreign Language Club. Oh! Susan so yeah. said, I am old. I watch Rocky Horror at home because I was too embarrassed to go to the theater. My mom would have been <laughs> shocked. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's when I was looking up stuff for this podcast, yeah. I wasn't looking up movies that would shock our mothers. I was looking at um like random weird movie things, and D was amazing and sent a bunch of links. And um, which I have you know, D carried it and share any of those with me. We hoarded them all for her, so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how we stay married. Because I'm a forgiving. Oh! <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, anyways. <laughs> I was looking up things. And I kept going down wormholes because <laughs> anything to try to avoid my life with my husband, you know, you gotta try to like find your joy and your fantasy somewhere. And so <laughs> I went on down. Make a life, baby. I went on down into this wormhole of um random movie plots like if you describe them in different ways that are funny and how strange they sound yeah you want to hear one yeah. hell yeah all right man gets steroids in a frisbee to fight off nazis wait a minute are these like real submissions yeah like people are trying to sell their idea no they're or not the real thing but it's oh. like people like rephrasing a movie. Yeah. Like, and this one's a super popular movie. It is? Yeah. Oh, you saw it. Like, a man gets steroids and a frisbee to fight off the Nazis. Dino's, Dino's. Oh. Captain America, right? Oh, like, yeah, good job. Yeah. Like, how are you? I forgot he fought the Nazis in that version. You know, I, 
you know, how I am with those Marvel DC movies. Shawnee doesn't do very well with it. Uh, it's hard for me. Between the, between the anime, alternative universes, and the real animes, and then Marvel and DC, I can't keep track. There's another really great one. Ready? Yeah. I don't know if Dee will get this one, but we'll see. Orphan boy, orphan farm boy kisses his sister while his deadbeat dad tries to get him to join the family biz. I don't know. Dun, 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 no? No. Still no? I don't think it was music. If it's... Steve were here, he would know. I don't know. Thank you, Christine Allard. Oh. It is Star Wars. Do you got it too? You know, I was thinking that for me a little dum 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 thing. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I mean, that's what popped into my head. But, but then I thought, how the hell is he a farm boy? Because he was. He was a farm boy. Luke Skywalker was, was totally a farm Palmer boy. Yeah, Tatooine. Okay. Yeah, I never got that whole that whole environmental aspect of Star Wars. It's I would like to tell beyond, everyone beyond my comprehension. I would like to tell everyone when we went to Ghostbusters last night, one of our friends said to Sean, "Who are you gonna call?" And Sean said the bank <laughs> for a mortgage. I knew what he wanted me to say. But he refused to say it. <laughs> what kind of man is that? Um, a solid one. Kimberly said. Y'all say redemption, Sean? One of the prisoners has a pet mouse, Mr. Jingles, that does tricks. Ooh. Is that what you're thinking? No, because, because, because what I was... Remembering was before Sean said okay. redemption. Are you sure? Oh, I'm positive. Are you positive about it? Positive, positive. <laughs> but I got really sad when they finally executed that poor man. I didn't watch that movie. I wouldn't have been able to handle that one either. So, <laughs> Susie said, you know that when, wait, this is not what Susie said, but do you know that when I ran for office, like I had been a city councilor, but then I was running for state rep, which was a mistake. Um, <clears throat> the other party on like some little early forum of the time said that I like they're in, in their phone bank calling um, to try to speak against me. Um, they said that I was conflict averse and I was too tender hearted to be a good legislator. Well, I gotta say they're kind of right. They were only two thirds right. They're pretty right. You'd still be a good legislator. They're but you right. are conflict averse and very tender hearted. Yeah. I was so, like, so yeah. you'd be a great legislator. You'd be a true representative of the people. I have to say, they struck well. It was a good strike because, what are you doing? Tighten up my bracelet. <laughs> I could see was this giant forearm. <laughs> well, I got to use my teeth because I don't have three hands. All right. Well, see, so this is. When the James Bond movies first hit theaters, my older brother, because he was 16, Got permission to go see Goldfinger. Goldfinger. It's always struck a naughty chord in my mind. I couldn't go because I was 14. As my brother left the house, he patted me on the head and said, See you later, <laughs> child. <laughs> That's a loving older brother right That's there. That's hysterical. I can totally visualize that. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that relationship. Christine <laughs> says. I'm being sincere, too. The Manchester Library used to have a theater in the basement. And they had three movies in the summer. And my dad took me to see The Shining when I was like eight. <laughs> you know, that's a really good concept, though. What if you opened the movie theater and only played like horror movies, yeah. but like the, the chairs were all, it was like you were in a, I'm trying not to say, I almost said the F word, whew, uh, like a dungeon, like just. Oh, you know what I mean? Yeah, that yeah. would totally add to the ambiance. That's right. Pretty scary as heck. Yeah, that's really kind of well done. My very first movie that I saw with my dad. All right, I remember a lot of my first movies. My first movie that I saw without any of my parents, and I think possibly my first movie I ever saw in a movie theater was Bambi. And I saw it with my brother's 
girlfriend at the time. And Bambi, spoiler, his mommy dies. And I was all of like three to five years old. Who the hell do you think you're going to spoil Bambi for at this point? I don't know. I'm just making sure. We don't have any three year olds listening. I'm just making sure. (laughs) And I cried so hard. I was completely traumatized forever. I was positive my mom was going to die. I started praying every night. Like every night, I had this set prayer, right? Like, which yeah. probably says I'm neurodivergent in some way. But my prayer was, dear God, please take care of my mommy, my daddy, my brother, my sister, all my friends and all my relatives. Please don't let anything hurt happen to them. Please don't let them get hurt. Please don't let the house get on fire or anything else catch on fire. And please don't let my mommy get shot by a hunter. Dude, that's the same prayer I say nowadays. <laughs> Except for that last awkward line. I was, and then I was like, and please let Jesus come into my heart. Amen. Like every night, because I went to Pioneer Baptist Bible Girls thing with Kathy Albertson's adorable family. And I was really terrified that Jesus was not in my heart. So I tried to like do double dog duty on Jesus getting into my heart every single night in my prayer. You were supposed to feel different. I never felt different. Oh, I was really God. freaked out. Did you fall asleep like halfway through? No, never. Never? Never. Really? No. Like that's not a method of putting yourself to sleep that you use? You do not understand the level <laughs> of anxiety I lived with as a child. Uh, I would. Well, I understand the level of anxiety you use living with as an adult. I would. I would I be. It can't be that much different. It was different. I would bury myself under the covers. I would surround myself with all my stuffed animals, which were all hand-me-downs, right? Because if a murderer came in and he needed to stab through the covers, he wouldn't be able to discern where the human body was. Oh, but he would have got you within three or four seconds. But I would have had a chance (laughs) because of all the stuffed animals confusing him, right? And I would go to sleep holding my covers tightly over my head like this and i would say my prayer and then i would not fall asleep for a really long time man i'm sorry it was a bad childhood that was that's crazy yeah <laughs> i cannot even fear didn't keep me from sleeping nothing keeps you from sleeping <laughs> but you can fall asleep standing up almost three yeah. months i probably have so the Susie says there was no rating on movies back then that was awesome. The wild, wild west. That and D says, "Wasn't the mouse in Green Mile named Mr. Jingles?" I, have I no don't idea. remember. I have no idea. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, I forgot to thank you, Christine, because your red rum reminded me that the other <laughs> worst movie I saw was my parents were divorced and my dad was going through some things because he like didn't want to be divorced and um he took you mean me he to... was drinking and no constantly driving by your mom's house no not oh, at all he okay. just had the depression and he i'm just kidding yeah my dad, I know your dad wouldn't do that. no my dad didn't drink at all nor did he stop people um but he did like get seriously into the um like single parent self help community. <laughs> um, <laughs> he was a player. <laughs> um, so, anyways, he took me, and I was just a little little kid, and he took me to go see Kramer versus Kramer, which was this really melodramatic. Why would a kid want to see that movie? I know it was like this really melodramatic drama with Dustin Hoffman and I think Meryl Streep or maybe Ter- Terry Gar, but there were boobies in it, naked boobies in it, and I was an uptight child, and I was like, I think I, I think I, would, I think I saw that movie. Probably you were probably not a super young child, but. I was probably like a teenager. A teenager. And I think I was maybe like met my grandparents and they were wanted to watch it. And I was just kind of, I had nothing else to do but sit there and sit through that dribble. Uh huh. Your sister's here, you know. I know. All right. 
uh, you wouldn't care. <laughs> Anyways, um, so what I was saying, like, I can feel your pain. I, uh, no kid would ever want to watch that movie, right? Oh, it was terrible. God, you must have been so bored. I was bored, horrified, trying to figure out what was going on. And all I can remember when I think back to the movie is the boobies. Like, I really remember the boobies. And then also, like, everything was sort of tan. Like, if you put it in an Instagram filter for tan. Yeah. That's what I remember when I think about that movie. Well, you know, they weren't so worried about skin cancer back then. I was like six years old going to see a rated R movie. Well, look And it wasn't you. horror. It wasn't even horror. It was lucky just the horror you. of marriage and existential life crisis and why do we all exist? Anyways. It explains a lot, honestly. Don't move from this comment by my sister. I'm explaining to you. Okay. Uh, these hit comment about wasn't the mouse in the green mile named Mr. Jingles because Kim said Shawshank Redemption and it was the green mile and I actually think my response was in reference to the green mile not Shawshank Redemption so the D gets a gold star <laughs> for uh, picking out the, the wrongness <laughs> and Kim gets a gold star for both creating conversation and B being like oh yeah I was wrong and you know what? In a world where everybody seems really committed to being right. Yes, Mom? I think that's a really big deal. Oh. Well, you're right. The ability to like be like, oh, whoops. And been a stupid mistake. Yeah, and not care. Yeah. That's like really grown up. Someday I'll be able to do that. Someday, but not yet. Just hold on. Hold I, I keep hoping. A little longer, baby. <laughs> D said, at my birthday party, I think it was my ninth, we ended up, oh my gosh, watching the Tommy Knockers by Stephen King. Was it in your basement? Autocorrect. Was it in the library's basement? Oh my God, D, we would have never, I, I didn't know the difference, to be honest with you, I've read a thousand Stephen King Look, books. Look, between D and Kim, making sure they're right, and being like, whoops. I know. They're the best. They've read a lot of Stephen King books too. Yeah. Mara Streep was in the movie, D says. I think that's about Kramer you know versus you want Kramer. Kramer versus Kramer? It was Kramer with a K too. Right? I remember that. Wasn't it? Yeah. 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 Like that was special. <laughs> that changed the whole title line from Do you Kramer think... with a C to Kramer with a K, which is bigger. So Do you anyway. think that in the Jerry Seinfeld show when they had Kramer? Yeah. They named him after Kramer versus Kramer? No, I never thought about that. Uh, I'm not even gonna. I'm sorry. All right. Kramer was just his own character. Kramer! He was way more cool than the other Kramers. Okay, do you want to read this? As a military. This is from Madeline Susie Gowie Burke. As a military brat in the 50s and 60s, the theaters overseas to war movie, monster movies, or Disney movies. We had no TV, so we acted out the movies we saw. Some got, sometimes Godzilla is like on the U.S. Army. That is awesome. But were they American movies or were they good movies? Like, I imagine if you were like a Godzilla movie buff, the original like Japanese ones would be the best in your opinion. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not. So I don't know. But that's what I would imagine. And that's why I asked that question. When I was a little kid, um, I had this friend named Debbie Muir, Christine, who probably know Debbie Muir. And, like, uh, Debbie and I were put both, like, pretty poor for our town. I don't know if Debbie would admit that, but she just got outed. But, yeah. uh, and, um, Hopefully she doesn't care. Yeah, on Saturdays, I would go, like, on Friday nights, I'd go sleep over Debbie's a lot because I love Debbie. And she, like, her family was just amazing and she was a super tomboy and there'd be mountain bikes and like jumps and she had like this whole neighborhood full of kids who just kind of run wild you know and it was so different from my very loner existence out on hardy road in and your house, even today if you drive by there, it's out, there's a shopping center right across the street but it's still in the middle of nowhere yeah where i grew up yeah houses are concerned yeah so i was really lonely as a little kid so i loved 
I love Debbie and I loved her family, like her mom and her dad and, and Johnny, her brother. Um, and all the kids in this neighborhood, which is so different from how I was growing up. And, uh, but every Friday night that I'd sleep over on Saturday mornings, like they didn't have cable either. And so we'd watch like channel 38 and there'd be these monster movies. Oh, hell yeah. Like creature from the black. Lagoon. Yeah. Yeah. And oh, we man. were so into these yeah. and I was allowed to eat like Doritos at Debbie's house. And like we'd have these giant bags of Doritos, and I'd get sick every time. And we'd watch Godzilla just stomp on everything. But then we'd just like Susie, we'd make up our own Godzilla movies, you know, like in the backyard and stuff. If you go all the way down to the bottom of the comments, Christine X. That's, oh yeah, that's exactly what it was. Creature Her, Devil Feature. One hundred percent correct. That's so right. But now you gotta go way back. Yeah, that's gonna be hard. Are you gonna talk while I try to find oh, it? Oh, I wish I could do it. Oh, Kim said, I used to it. I'm used to it. Gotta love him. I think she's talking about you. Oh, well, probably. He's gotta love you because you're blood. Susie said, one of the overseas theaters had warning signs about checking for scorpions. Before oh, oh, my God. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> That's horrible. Like, I'd rather than say check for snakes. You can see them a lot more easy. I'd be like, check Scorpions for Doritos. Scorpions aren't that big. Huh? I'd be like, check for Doritos. Yeah. Uh, Kimberly says, y'all are going to make me bust my stitches open. Don't do that. Please. You got to heal. Read John's. All right. When I was like 10, when HBO first came out, I had a babysitter that was watching Salem's Lot. Oh, no. <laughs> and I was in the hallway behind her watching it. <laughs> I had nightmares for years after that. <laughs> John, have you ever seen Bigfoot? The end. All right. The end. <laughs> he said, well, I do love my Stephen King movies. Carrie. Carrie does not like Carrie because of the namesake. Mm -hmm. Cujo, <laughs> Tommy Knockers, the Sleepwalkers, which they rarely play on TV. And nope, we watch Tommy Knockers <laughs> in the Den. Well, a, a, a proper den can be a scary place too. I sometimes. know it can. <laughs> Christine, were you in there? And when I lived on Southgate Drive in Bedford, New Hampshire, and Sean Young was there and Jackie Shriver, and we had this big paranormal experience in the den slash basement of my house. That is the question. Um, You're asking hard questions tonight. I know. Christine says she's still riding bikes like crazy. Pan mask challenge. That's about Debbie Muir. Yeah. Debbie Muir was the coolest human in the world. Debbie Muir still rides bikes. Oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> she's amazing. Um, Susie says. American movies that were two years old by the time they, oh, my God. By the time they reached the military theaters overseas. As far as dub movies, I've <laughs> seen John Wayne speak Turkish, Spanish, and Japanese. That's amazing. That is amazing. That's amazing. He said they went to a lot of drive-in theaters. That's also cool. Oh, D says a strange movie. He, trying to get us back on track, yeah, said, joke. Oh. said a strange movie is Colossal with Anne Hathaway and Jason Sudeikis. I've heard of both of those people, but I've never <laughs> even heard of that movie. You know, Have you seen that movie? Of course I haven't seen that movie. You haven't? No. Oh. But what, what were you laughing at? Just the fact that you're like, I've heard of Anne Hathaway yeah. is amazing to me. I don't know why. Because she was in the Princess Diaries and in a million trillion things. So, I'm not going to admit to seeing the Princess oh, Diaries. Like shit. What? It would make me sick. I didn't say I haven't. I said I'm not going to admit to it. All right. Here is what IMDb says Colossal is about. Gloria is an out-of-work party girl forced to leave her life in New York City and move back home. When reports surface that a giant creature is destroying Seoul. He gradually comes to the realization that she is somehow connected to the phenomenon. Oh, that sounds like it can be interesting. I know. 
It's 2016. I don't mind a weird movie once in a while. You said it wasn't scary. It was well lit in broad daylight, but a very, very <laughs> weird movie. What's the new movie that was really weird that everybody was talking about? Salt something. I don't know. Did we watch it? Yes. It yeah. had the guy dancing naked at the end. Uh, Look at your face. Your face is so like nothing. We, we watch a lot. <laughs> We don't watch a lot of TV, but it was those, British. All those things we watched. Run we wa we unfortunately watched it with Emily because it was awkward. Oh no, no, that's why I don't remember. And it was because uh, I'm always sitting off to the side, half paying attention. It doesn't have anything to do with anything. <laughs> it's a really. It was a very. It was considered salt burn. Help As a out. student at Oxford University he finds himself drawn into the world of a charming and aristocratic classmate who invites him to his eccentric oh, family. Oh, that one! Yeah. Sprawling estate, and Isn't then he dances really like... naked at the end. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That was a weird. I didn't movie. see much of that, but I saw enough to know it was whacked. Up. It was. It was. It was him. To... Never mind. That'd be a huge spoiler. Yeah, we can't spoil it because it's still yeah, yeah, that. Anyways. Uh, Christina says she was not there, but we did go to the Devil's Church together. What's which, the Devil's Church? It's a place in New Hampshire. And you've never taken me there? I don't remember going. Oh. And Christine remembers going, and I absolutely believe her, but it's kind of freaking my like my brain out that I don't... Oh, you're very good at forgetting things. I'm really good at repressing things, you're honestly. So that, right? But my worry is, why did I repress it? You know, like, why can't I remember going to this creepy place? And that's freaking me out. Probably more than whatever happened at the freaky place. Probably. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. See, you got quiet because it's creepy. Nah, um, I got quiet because I was reading John's response and I was like, oh. You weren't even paying attention? Welcome <laughs> to my marriage. I was paying attention to what you said. You're more creeped out by the fact that you can't remember going there. <laughs> Blah, blah, blah. Anyway. <laughs> I was paying attention. Anyways. <laughs> Would you like me to... John answered your Bigfoot question. Okay. You read it. You're not going to like the second half. <laughs> he said, not 100% yes to Bigfoot, but I did see silhouettes and roars in the woods at night. I wish I could be 100% see one because there'd be a carcass and I'd be rich. John Bell. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, He'd man. kill Harry of the Harry and the Henderson. That's not a <laughs> Bigfoot. You're going to cry again. <laughs> I knew you wouldn't like that. <laughs> oh, well. That's all right. Read, read, D, read, Because I have to. You talking about clutch. creature feature made me. Think, you talking about creature feature made her think of Saltburn. Maybe uh, Saltburn. Oh, Christine says that the Devil's Church doesn't exist anymore. And maybe I wasn't there that night. Maybe you weren't there, and now you can't take me there. I think that I Christine bet it existed is, last year. What? I bet Christine just trying to make me feel better. He said, if you want a really weird movie, weirder than Saltburn, the French movie, Titan. Wow, geez, now we're going to have to watch that. Uh, and Christine is giving a name of people who are at the Devil's Church. Yeah. No, Joe. Joe isn't there. Um, And then uh, Susie says. My funds. My funds. My, my sons. sons. My son's first movie was at the drive-in in Trenton. Maine. Yeah, that's awesome. Because it's not there anymore. <laughs> we watched the longest, most boring movie called The Longest Day. The longest he was four day. months old. I don't think he remembers. I it. think he might remember it. He might. And that would explain a lot. <laughs> so Titan, which uh, Dee mentioned, is a 2021 body horror psychological drama film Written and directed by Julia, I'm going to butcher this, Ducournau. Ducournau? 
The French-Belgian co-production stars Agathe, Agatha, Agathe, Roselle in her feature <laughs> film debut as Alexa, a woman who, after being injured in a car crash as a child, with a titanium plate fitted to her head. <laughs> I kind of, that's intriguing actually to me. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I mean, at the very, very end, you're like, so that's the real people have that all the time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, here, I have another movie plot one. Ready? What? A group spends nine oh. hours. Nine hours. That's a big hint. Okay. Trying to return a piece of jewelry. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing for me. <laughs> I'm sorry. Johnny, nine, nine hours. Yeah. Nine hours. Oh, Dee's got it. Dee always gets it. How the heck did you expect me to get that one? How could you not? Oh, because of the length of the movie? Yes. Oh, I've never watched it, so I'm not really that familiar. You have it watched it. Not the whole nine hours. All right, ready? Yeah. Drug <laughs> all right, ready? Excuse me. Go ahead. Drug addicted girl takes advantage of mentally challenged boy for three decades. I know you've seen this one. Oh, I'm sure I have. You need a hint? Probably. Yeah, all right. You know, yes. what, you know what life is like? That's not a hint for me. <laughs> Do you know what it's like, Sean? What's life like? It's like a box of chocolate. Oh, my God. Forrest Gump? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But isn't it funny, like, if you think of a movie, like, I he think. You got it. He always gets it because Dean's brilliant, which is why she needs to come teach up here. Um, but like I think it's so funny when you look at movie plots that way, like how absurd and strange. It is when you make it like that. Like the log lines, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So cool. So Yes. The (laughs) The one movie I've seen on my list so far that I know you've seen. It is a strange ish movie. Okay. It's Cocaine Man. <laughs> <laughs> but wasn't that supposed to be like, I forget, was it supposed to be based on a true story? It's vaguely based on a true story because yeah. this guy really did dump cocaine off of an airplane. Yeah. And a bear really did get addicted to the cocaine. <laughs> but the bear Obviously did, the bear didn't do all that crazy stuff. It didn't it. kill tons and tons of people <laughs> and then miraculously spare the annoying children. Um it <laughs> it just like ended up getting murdered by forest. It got put down. It wasn't murdered. It was murdered. Oh, it wasn't the bear's God. fault it got addicted to the cocaine. Obviously not. <sighs> <laughs> Christine's like dances with wolves meets blue man group. Is that a movie? <laughs> what is it? Or is it your life? What? Or is it your life? Kind of my life. <laughs> have you ever seen Blue Man Group in real life? I have. You have? Yeah. Well, in Florida? No, in like Boston or something. What? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. No. Yes. Oh wow. <laughs> I always forget you had a life before me. Yes. Wasn't one tenth of a percent as good as this one, but there always was a life before you, baby. Um, Christine was like, "That's Avatar," because. Oh, see, I've never seen that. And and both she and Dee didn't trust us to get it. Which I love about oh, them. Oh, he knew what it was. They're taking care <laughs> of us, man. I never saw that movie. All right, tell me your story, babe. A story? That you're starting. I didn't have a story. Oh, I thought you did. No, I was talking about cocaine, man. Okay. But well, you didn't talk much about it. You saw more of it than I did. I was in and out of the room, but every time I walked in the room, it was eating a different person. All right, so we tried to watch Cocaine Bear, but Emily, the eldest child of the family, had a lot of issues with Cocaine Bear because she wanted the children to die. (laughs) And what were these children? They were just annoying. 
They were annoying oh. children, and they made a lot of mistakes, and all these other humans were dying, but not the children. So she read ahead for the spoilers and found out that the children weren't going to die, and she was so mad that we had to stop watching the show. Really? You didn't even finish it? Oh, man. But that's good, because I don't know if I would have wanted to see the bear die. Uh, does the bear die? I don't know. Well, But I'm assuming it did. Like, well, it's like the modern day old yeller. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Susie says a pet peeve of hers is when movie endings don't match the book endings. That used to be such, I would be so, I would literally get so pissed off when I read a book and then I went and watched the movie and, and they just like, it was, totally wasn't the same at all, you know. It just wasn't what you fell in love with in the book form. Uh huh. You ever experienced that? Yes. Yeah. Like I, I would know get. You have. I mean, when I was young, I would get mad if they didn't even like look like the characters. Like well, when you I saw the. In your head. Yeah, when I saw <laughs> the first Har for the first couple of Harry Potters, I had a really hard time because a lot of the professors didn't look like how I had imagined. Um. Twilight. I also had a similar problem. Yeah. Because the characters didn't look like what I expected. Well, sometimes they're super explicit in their descriptions. Yeah. It's like Tom Cruise playing Jack Reacher. Yeah. Come on. That really a little leprechaun you. playing a six foot two kit guy. It's like really. Sean has had a really hard time with that for a very Oh, uh, I'll never not have a hard time with that. Can we talk about why you've had a hard time with that? Because, well, there might be some Tom Cruise fans listening. I don't want to cap on Tom. I mean, really, he just doesn't fit the very explicit details of the build of Jack Reacher in the books. So in the books, Jack Reacher is this really big, stoic guy, right? He's really tall and really strong. And, like, there's, like, all this talk within the books itself about how people react to the physicality of this man because he is so big. And you know who else is so big? That Me. probably found a little bit of himself in that Tom Reacher character. John, oh, Jack Reacher. Thank okay, you. Jack Reacher. What? Who would that be? Huh? Who would that be? Who is that? Yeah. And so then when you see Itty Bitty Tom Cruise playing it, what happened? There's like this mental discord, right? Like right. there's a disconnect. There's like this, you ruined the world of fantasy that I had let myself get into. And then you feel betrayed, right? Yes. Yeah. I do totally yeah. feel betrayed. Yeah. But like, they made up for it with like. Truth uh, be told, the actor in the Reacher series was on Netflix. Yeah. Does know. not fit the mold either. How does he not fit? Because Jack Reacher is six foot two tall, and he's he's like a he's a, a well formed. He's more like a farm boy type. He's not like a fucking gym rat. Oh. Is he? He he. Don't, that's not how he even lives. He's just more like naturally strong, and you know, and just not super lean, but not like dad bod either. So the guy in the Reacher. Mini series TV show is right. too way superhero too, cut too buff, yeah. for you. Oh, yeah, and but I can live with it because it's not Tom Cruise. Is that because your own stature is more fun, boy? No, no, I'll let you read some of the books. And uh, then you'll see uh, what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, Christine is also not a Tom Cruise fan, so she can hang out with us. That's good. Um, as neither is, is neither is Susie. Susie. Apparently. Apparently, Christine's got the rock. flavors to, taste to you, baby. Harry loves the rock. He retweeted one of my tweets. And yeah. if you retweet one of my tweets, oh, you're my fan right. forever. Oh, um, I walk in here at night until we watch this on Rock Show. Let's just change the channel real quick. I wish I I wish I could be that easily pleased, but no. Um, but I do like to say, can you smell what the rock is cooking? Because that's like my favorite thing. Because he's in love with Dwayne Johnson. No, I just love to say that. I mean, really. I like to think of his wrestling days. Dwayne Johnson. Okay. Because that's a whole new character in your mind's eye, isn't it? Dwayne Johnson. No. Yes.
take off my headphones <laughs> and not listen to you anymore. I'm just jealous. I'm just jealous of that old man. You are. <laughs> um, D says, I haven't been able to finish all the boys I love before movies because they changed John Ambrose's character and made me so mad. See? Exactly. You can't do that. I, that also pisses me off. When when they, like, change character, like, I mean, I don't, if somebody dies, that series is just probably in. <laughs> <laughs> but if it's just, like, he got put in rehab so they got a new actor, then... <laughs> It's no better, no worse. It could be like Doctor Who and it could just regenerate. I can't watch Doctor Who because there's a different doctor all the time. Oh. That's crazy. Anyway. I know it's part of the whole package deal, but I just, I, can't, I don't understand that. Both your sister and Dee are not, also not in the TC fan club. Well, that is all fantastic. The Scientologists are going to come after us now. I know. And We're going to get a lawsuit now. If you want to say that word, we would have been all right, probably. But uh, all right, we have to end soon. So she <laughs> says, I have the same paint by number painting that hangs outside Bella's bedroom in the first Twilight Room movie. That's pretty cool. That's because, so like, cool. I would have never known that was a paint by number painting. My mom painted. Now I need to go watch the movie uh, just yeah. to look at that. <laughs> But that's something you probably don't even notice. That's amazing, though. Yeah, yeah. That's so strange. Um, and Dee said they had the perfect guy cast in the first movie, but then when the sequel picked up, they totally recast, and I hated it. <laughs> I like you, Dee. I think I could have gone to see. I could go see a movie with Dee and probably All Christine. Movie. Any movie. Oh, probably. I feel like could. we could vibe over movies. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Do you want to say goodbye? Oh, you got to read that last comment first. Oh, I didn't see it. Oh, Thanks, Christine. Did Christine. you post a painting thing? I did post a painting. I was My finally... God, I haven't, I've been so busy, I haven't been online in like eight hours. And I didn't say, baby, can you go like my things? No, you didn't. I won't feel alone inside. You're getting so strong, honey. <laughs> my God. Thanks, Christine. Um, and he said, I also had Bella's comfort set from Twilight. That's amazing. And uh, Kimberly said, maybe the outsiders. I feel like an outsider right now. No way. Uh, yeah. We're going to be an outsider here in a few minutes. All right. You ready? I'm ready. All right. You guys say goodbye and thank you. Goodbye, everybody. And thank you so much for showing up. We appreciate it. And hanging out with us, even though I didn't get to any of these links. Well, we didn't do that with movies. <laughs> We vaguely talked about them. That counts. And we were strange while we talked about them. Yeah, definitely. That also counts. But thank you, everybody, for hanging out with us. And yes, thank you. Yeah. Have a great weekend. And we love you very much, too. And Kimberly, feel better soon, buddy. I'm going to hit the outro now. You ready? You should. All right, you got it. <laughs> thank you for listening to Loving the Strange. Please be sure to like and subscribe. And remember... Embrace the Strange. New episodes every Saturday. Live streaming Fridays. Go get your strange on, friends. Thanks for listening.